Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good uh, investigation. Yeah, and if you stop coming out in uh, the times that I'm in <laughs> Scotland, I could show you some of the places. Well, I'll, I'll talk to the WSOP and see if they can fix that. Yeah, I mean, come on, what's so. more important, me or the World Series of Poker? Well, <laughs> to me, that's an easy answer. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. I would go so. play I with mean, you, I, right? What, what did you call it again? The hubby? The, hu- uh, the hubby daycare. Hub- hubby daycare, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, a great, what a great line. <laughs> well, it is. And, you know, it was, he loves it. And he's really, really good at it. Now that he's learned that you can't apply chess strategy to it, he's a he's a chess master. So when he started playing poker, he tried to play it logically, which was great, until you throw in chance and luck. And that took a little while to adjust to because he's very methodical. Yeah. And Yeah, you know, uh, Kane, the guy that's my co-founder, the guy that right. played Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th movies, and he played Victor Crowley in all the Hatchet movies, he actually plays in a lot of those big tournaments, too. Well, you had told me that. Does he do well in them? He's done pretty well in, in several. Does he like But I think the... Kane, just, Kane just scares everybody else <laughs> <when> he plays. <laughs> they just want to leave, just, don't they? Everybody just throws their stuff in the pot and leaves <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's so funny i guess because you know i'm gonna step out on a limb here most people who know me know it but i'm an empath as well as a few other things and i i can't watch horror it just blows me out of the water i can if, if it's a good if the actors are good it blows me out of the water Yeah, you know, because they're selling the emotion and stuff if it's not good acting then it's kind of like a cheese factory right but, um, well, you know, you, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt there. That's okay. I'm, I interrupted you probably. But it's just, it's very difficult to watch gore and actual you know, horrified people when you feel all of those things sometimes. It's weird. And that's all I was going to say. What were you going to say? Well, well, I was going to say what's really strange is I've probably been in 50 horror movies. Yes. And... I, I don't watch them. I'm the same way. I, I don't like seeing people get hurt. It bothers me. Right. So, so I mean, I, I've seen a few. I've seen the, you know, I, you know, I knew Kane was going to be in, you know, the new Jason. So naturally, I had to go, had to go watch that when it first came out. And well, sure. I've seen all four of the Hatchets. You know, I worked on all four of them, so I had to watch those. They're pretty good. Adam Green, who directed them, has got a pretty good feel for things so i mean he did put out some pretty good product there well it is all about the production right yeah it's actually making the you know more look like you had more money to spend than you actually did so you get more production value for your bucks and he's he's a master at that cool well you know you have to appreciate the the craft of that you know just because uh, you know, it's it's funny because you meet people in the movie business and some of them just do it for the money, but then you meet people uh, that really have the passion for it, and, and Adam Green is definitely one of those guys. Right. So, I mean, I think when you have the passion for it, you turn out a better product. I just, you know, that's the way I feel about it anyway. Well, anything that you love, you do better. You'd think so. Well, you would think so, but I believe that. I kind of do, too, but I do know some people that really love things that are just terrible at it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. To be honest with you. <laughs> yes. When I when I was in high school and as an adult, too, I've had friends that were convinced that they were the next rock stars, and they should have bought tickets <laughs> instead of yeah. instead of being on stage. But you know what? They were following a passion. And you have to salute that. Well, my younger brother is under the impression that he's a great singer, mm-hmm. and it sounds more like somebody's torturing a cat. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, every year at my birthday, I try and hide just so I don't have to listen to him sing to me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, <laughs> that is funny, because I know I can't sing, and people insist on asking, why don't you lead us in happy birthday, or why don't you... Do- 
And the best thing I can do is just act like I'm doing the Maryland thing. And then everybody just gets laughing and they're not paying attention to the singing. It's all good. Now, besides that, when people sing happy birthday, it's not exactly, you know, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. I mean, there's, <laughs> they all pretty much stink. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and that's what makes it fun, though. You know, if you're all equally bad, then you're all having an equally good time. And then you have the one that's, person that really is a gifted singer going, oh, my word. <laughs> oh, I hate those people. The ones that, you know, they're singing happy birthday and they're like doing an aria in the bag. Yeah, oh, it's like, I'm not going to offer any. <laughs> I know. It's just like, I just shut up and listen. Yeah, that's all I can do. Well, uh, will you just quit? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, when you started Hollywood Ghost Hunters, you... Everything that I read said that based on your past experiences and Kane's past experiences, you both had an interest in the paranormal, so you created this group so that other people in your industry, could, you know, you had equal interests, and it just kind of became a thing. So what were your past experiences that made you decide to do that, or some of them? Oh. I can't even begin to recount them all. I mean, I, my very first one, like I'm 150 years old now. Um, my first one was when I was 13 years old. And I'll relay it. My my grandfather had uh, gotten killed in a, uh accident. Oh, sorry. And we took him from Chicago down to Paducah, Kentucky, to, where he wanted to be buried. So we went on a train, my mom and I. And we got there in the funeral home, picked up, you know, the, the casket to take it, you know, for the funeral and uh, for the burial. But because it had happened so quickly, we didn't have a hotel room or anything. So we went to the closest one to where the graveyard was because we planned to go do that and then just leave. Right. And it was an older building. And we got in there and the guy says, well, I'm sorry, I only have one room left and it's haunted. Ooh. Well, you know, I'm 13 years old. That's like getting the golden ticket to Disneyland. <laughs> right. Woo, 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 haunted house, you know. So we go up into this place, my mom and I, and it's about a room's about 20 feet across, and it's got a wooden floor, and both of the beds are on rollers, and they're on opposite walls. And we both went to bed because, you know, it had been a long trip, and uh, in the middle of the night, I heard her, hear her scream, oh. and I look up, and I see her bed, you know, I mean, going really fast across the floor towards me. Oh, my gosh. And then I realized that my bed is going towards her. <gasps> and we actually slammed together in the middle of the room. Now, that was enough to freak us out. But we're, my mother was, you know, very, very intelligent. And we immediately set about trying to debunk the whole thing long before anybody even had ever heard the word debunked. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so what we did is we got a glass and put it on its side to see if it would roll, to, you know, like if the floor was warped, it wouldn't move at all. So we got the beds and, and tried pushing them, you know, to, down the thing. And they would, you could, if you shoved them as hard as you could, they'd go like three feet. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, these things just went flying about 10 feet each to where we smacked into each other. So, uh, you know, we thought maybe trucks had made the, the you know, the uh, vibrations made something move or something, but we couldn't even push them. So, I mean, there's no way vibration made it. So that really got my curiosity. That is fascinating. But you know what? I'll let us go late for a break. So we're going to be back in three minutes with Rick McCollum and more experiences.
listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. And just like that, we're back. You still with me, Rick? I certainly am. I'm so excited about that. Thank you for being here, by the way. So, well, you know me. I'm always happy to come on your show. <laughs> well, I'm always happy to have you. I didn't want to have still you. Still, well, that works out. <laughs> I know, right? Synchronicity. I actually um, went for some time without having a guest because I was trying to get the sound and production side of this going well. It took a little while, but here we are, and I'm just thrilled. I really am. Me I, too. You know, we had talked about you know me going to California when you're off to Scotland and stuff. You spent a good bit of time out there, didn't you? Yeah, I go every year for a month Mm -hmm. to Scotland. I mean, it's if you're into ghost hunting, I mean, I'm pretty much convinced that every place in Scotland is haunted. They have such history; it would be hard for them not to be. What's What's really funny is a lot of people don't really understand Scotland, and I've been there so many times, you know, and have a lot of really good friends over there. It was a brutal, brutal place. I mean, torture and wars and, I mean, I mean, unbelievable savagery, which is really weird because the Scottish people are like the nicest people I've ever met. So, I mean, it's a, it's a whole dichotomy, the whole, the whole thing, but it's, you know, fantastic place. But there's so much things. I mean, no matter where you go, it's haunted. And, and the absolutely thing, I'll show you that I've been to Scotland. The lovely thing they've got over there is that uh, if you – have an abandoned castle or anything you want to go ghost hunting you don't have to call the police you don't have to have a an insurance waiver you don't have to pay somebody to go in you just go in you know and then nobody bothers you and if you fall down and you want to sue somebody the judge goes well you're banging around in the middle of a dark castle what do you expect you dumbass move there along you go. <laughs> <laughs> so a little more realism and a lot less victimization then mm-hmm. or victim- or living as a victim, not victimizing. But. Yeah, they're they're more into being grown ups over there. Uh, yes, we have someone in chat who says that she is still waiting on a signed photo of you in a kilt. So. Well, it's because I'm allergic to wool. <laughs> there you go. No kilts unless they're polyester. So. No, I'm allergic to polyester too. I, that I actually. Are you really? Because I really want a kilt is um, I tried to get some place over there, one of the kilt makers, to make me one out of cotton. And they wanted so much money for it, I was like, oh, for 